This coming Sunday, Nicolas Sarkozy and François Hollande, both aged 57 and who both grew up in the same smart inner suburb of Paris, faces of the French presidential election. If that happens, they'll contest a final round on May the 6th, Nicolas as centre-right president and François as the left-wing socialist challenger. The chances of an upset are better than evens, but the game is far from over, with the brooding French public giving every sign they wish they had better choices from both left and right, like Jacques Chirac, for example, or François Mitterrand, or the founder of the Fifth Republic himself, General Charles de Gaulle, whose bearing and standing was, well, more presidential than the present incumbent, whose mood and policy swings have created some confusion in Europe's chancelleries. But life is now very different from when Germany's first post-World War II Chancellor Conrad Adenauer envisaged a Europe when the Germans ran the economics and the French the politics. Now the Germans run both, and there's not a little resentment in France about this, as Sarko found out when he issued a soundbite saying that he wished the French could be more German. And then when the present German Chancellor Angela Merkel offered to come to France to campaign for his re-election, Sarkozy decided this was not a good idea at all and reverted to what is a very French campaign where French interests are paramount. This has resulted in a number of campaign pledges which are music to the ears of the Toujours la France voters but not exactly a welcome concerto to the Eurocrats in EU headquarters at the Berlaymont in Brussels. Sarkozy promises to cut the French contribution to the European Union budget. This may be an idle threat, but it's none too popular in Berlin. He has called on Europe to protect its citizens. This smells of trade protectionism rather than the urgent need to improve slipping French competitiveness. And he wants tougher rules against migration and domestic preferences in France's public contracts. Holland, while claiming to be a good European, goes further. He snorts at what he calls Mercosiism. He would like to see more political influence over the European Central Bank, so it focuses on full employment, not fiscal rectitude. He wants the Lisbon Treaty renegotiated, and he's been on the record as saying he dislikes rich people. Interesting, given that his background was from a wealthy family in neuilly sur seine whereas Sarkozy was brought up in the same area by a single mother after his father left them. There are, of course, other candidates, all with more extreme views. Slugging it out for third place is the far-left revolutionary Jean-Luc Mélenchon of the Front Gauche and far-right Marine Le Pen of the Front National. Last time round, the socialist candidate was edged out by Le Pen's father, but this seems unlikely to happen again. Hollande is threatened by Mélenchon, who has vowed to tax earnings over €360,000 at 100% and attacks what he calls Anglo-Saxonism and their stinking money. Recently, he described Hollande as being as useful as the captain of a pedalo in a storm. In a sense, though, these French politicians are adrift of the present European reality, buffeted by it, but also highly protected by it. No one is on the campaign trail seeking the abolition of the multi-billion common farm policy, which benefits French farmers hugely. And if the French voters' nostalgia leads them back to the past, then former President Chirac has some advice for them. François Hollande, he says in his memoir, is a true statesman. That's not a good omen for Nicolas Sarkozy.